Hi, let's talk about building blocks of data literacy, thinking how we can use this K-12 data skills progression template to our advantage to set ourselves and our students up for success with data. So working with data is a process. It involves you, you're an active member of that process. It involves getting data, exploring data, and inferring meaning from data. And it's when these interlock that we're actually working with data. And we do some component of all three of these realms every time we're working with data. But these are sort of big, broad categories. Let's break it down a little bit more. Within each of those realms, we can think about different skill areas that we need to focus on or that we're working in or that we could be working in. So for example, in getting data, we ask questions and consider possible outcomes. We generate data, we quantify data, and we organize and process our data. In explore data, we visualize data, we filter, simplify, or transform data to reveal, reveal patterns, and we describe and analyze those patterns. And in the realm of infer meaning from data, we interpret data to learn something, right? Data has a purpose. It's helping us understand the system, the phenomenon, the question that we have. We evaluate our uncertainty that always exists, and we use or build on the new knowledge that we gain from the data. So certainly we aren't hitting all of these data skill areas every time we work with data, but we're hitting at least something across each of these three realms. And what I think is also important to remember is that if we think about soccer as an analogy, the amoeba ball that our littles play when they're first learning soccer looks really different than our prof US professional team when they're playing at the World Cup. They're both playing soccer, but at very different levels of skill mastery. The thing is, is we're not trying to go from amoeba ball <laughs> to the World Cup. Instead, what we're trying to do is strategically and consciously build this progression through time and practice to build the skills and stepwise up this K-12 sequence to prepare our students for college, for the workforce, or just for society at large, given how much data we have. So how can we do that? We can use this template. And I wanna describe how the template is set up so that you can get a sense of how to make sense of it. So for each of those data skill areas, that we saw a few slides back, there are groupings within the template. Because even within those, there are like even big, you know, even sort of a smaller tier of groupings that we've called tasks, sort of general kinds of things that we need to do. Each task has a row, and then we've identified what are the specific skills for that task within different grade bands. So K to two, three, five, grade six, grade seven, eight, grade nine, and grades 10 to 12. Grade six and grade nine are fundamental key transition points when working with data that have to do developmentally with where our minds are and what our learners are able to take on. So that's why we've pulled them apart from the grade bands that they're more typically a component of. So you can look within a cell to get a sense of for this task, what should my sixth grade students be working towards mastery of? So you can, other components of this that you can look for are some cells have a not applicable. That just means there isn't a task relevant at the K to two or at the grade of three, three to five level. It builds over time. We need to get them their learning farther along before we take it on. Similarly, there are some tasks in the upper grades where there's nothing new. There are no new skills. Instead, they're just applying the skills they already have to more complex topics or things like that. Each row has a sort of highlighted or keystone cell that's the key linchpin for getting that task. Sometimes it shows up early, sometimes it shows up late. So how do we use this template? Well, we can use it in a couple ways. We can read across a row, across a task to get a sense of how does this build over time? What are the skills that are building over time across the K-12 sequence? We can also look down a column. So for example, you could look at, okay, so what are my third graders supposed to be working on? What are the skills they're supposed to be practicing so that they master them by the end of fifth grade? Also, what skills should they be coming into third grade with because they've mastered them in the K-12 sequence? And where's my end point? Where's my boundary where I'm gonna hand it off to my colleague who teaches sixth grade? So a couple different ways that you can look at the template. It's called building blocks for a reason because we build upon the skills 
that have come before and we add new, we layer them on. If we're missing those early foundational skills, it doesn't work so well and it comes toppling down as we're helping our students sort of build in their maturity and mastery of data literacy overall, this bundle of skills that we have. Here's the, the URL that you can access it. Well, so we have these bundles of skills that we're working on across these three realms. I just wanna point out, this isn't a linear process. It's not an uncooked <laughs> linguine noodle. It's the full cooked like gobbledygook that's on the plate that's so delicious and fun. Oh, but there's not one way through, the, through these realms. There's not one way to work through these different data skills. And similarly, because there's, there's not one way and we're working on this across to K-12, we can break it apart and then we can build in complexity. We can break it down to build it up. So the, some core tenets, data is more than making graphs and figuring out our claim from the data. We need to be strategic about what one or two skills, those individual things within each cell of a row and a column across the whole column that we're working on. Our complexity and difficulty of data sets, the skills, the tasks, what we're asking our students to do builds over time. And it's this repetition, iteration and time that helps build their mastery. Because data literacy is the ability to collect, organize, visualize, analyze, interpret, and share data for yourself and others to understand. And that's way more than any of us can accomplish in one lesson plan, let alone one year. So let's it's set them up for success, not thinking there's a right way to do it, but by having a way to think about and work through this process. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I hope this has helped and that you enjoy playing with your data. Thanks so much. Have a good day.